So we come to the end of the 11th uh, Boleyn days. And uh, I want to, as I've made a tradition now, mention just a few things I've learned throughout these uh, spectacular um, sets of talks. I learned lots, of course. Um, and I'll just highlight six of those things that, uh, that spring to my mind when I was putting together this presentation, as you will understand as I'm going to show pictures from the previous talks at lunchtime today. Um, I, I learned that we're able to visualize um, the, uh, the formation of atmospheric aerosols in the Arctic Ocean, watch them, watch them grow. I learned that at the Eocene Oligocene transition, we have good reason to believe that the, clo the, uh, the closing off of the Arctic Ocean um, led to Atlantic overturning, which drives the present day climate that we enjoy in Europe. I learned that we can look at dust layers and peat bogs to learn about past storminess um, back in uh, periods of up to 10,000 years or longer. I learned that in the Boleyn Center database, um, we have maps from which we can, do, uh, we can look at uh, carbon fluxes to the Arctic Ocean. I learned that we can use uh, objects, archaeological finds, to, do, to look at and study how glaciers have moved in the past. And I learned that I can myself apply online <laughs> for money to make my own wetland. <laughs> And uh, I can do it as a carbon sink. And I thought proactively, I actually will apply to do that. And I'll put it in the middle of the runway at Arlanda Airport. <laughs> and, and why I'm figuring I add a double carbon sink by the reduction in air traffic. <laughs> but this has been a special year uh, because we're witnessing, a, we're witnessing the first stage of a societal transformation. And there's more I've learned this year. And I want to share two things I learned about, two things I learned about climate in general in 2019. And both of them are going to be quotes. And the quotes from a meeting in Lausanne. Um, the meeting was called Smile. Uh, it was organized by the youth organization Fridays for Future. Uh, it was a conference of about 450 young people who traveled by train to, this, uh, to the city of Lausanne and met to decide were this... Uh, uh, where this uh, movement will go in the future. They open the conference with two key phrases. Um, and, the first, and I'm going to tell you both of them. The first one is you're never too old to learn. Now this speaks to me as a rather old climate scientist, past 50 now. And I realized, what did I learn this year? I learned the meaning of this curve. This curve that we look at as climate scientists, um, and we look at it and we see a gradual increase in temperature from 1880 to 2018. It's a fascinating curve. As scientists, we, we, part of the thing we reach out to is the simple fascination of watching change. And then when we extend the time series to 2000 years, we see it's really a radical difference from a very stable climate over the past 2,000 years. And then when we add the um, IPCC um, forecast for business as usual, we see a curve that both stuns us and um, drives our research. I learned the meaning of that curve this year, that it's not just a graph. Um, it's an existential threat. It is defining our future. And Arian talked about bending that curve. Um, and that is what we're really here for. The second thing I learned at that meeting, and the second key phrase that was used at the, end, at the introductory speeches was, you are never too small to make a difference. And of course, that's referring to Greta Thunberg and of course, the many, many other young people who sit at places such as, uh, for example, Mint Toriot every Friday.
But I'm also not too small to make a difference. And no one in this room is too small to make a difference. That phrase does not just speak to young protesters. It speaks to us all. I was pleased that the Berlin Centre was willing to put together this to state that the concerns expressed by these young protesters are justified. The Berlin Centre's board put itself behind that statement, which is important to stand behind these young people and, pass, and say we, that what they're doing has science behind them. Stockholm University, one university in Scandinavia, in a small part of Europe, in a small part of the world, is not too small to make a difference. Um, the rector of Stockholm University signed the SDG Accord, the university and college sector's collective response to the global goals. This was a statement of a climate emergency. It had three points, and I only lift up the most important one. The most important one is Stockholm University has committed itself to going carbon neutral by 2040. That's an enormous task. Stockholm University is, however, not, however, not too small to make a difference. Uh, and we will be carbon neutral by 2040. The rector has already called in the Berlin Centre representatives, SRC, to talk about how that's actually going to become a reality. Um, there'll be a meeting on the 3rd of December, uh, open meeting to learn more about uh, St Stockholm University being carbon neutral by 2040. So those were two quotes from Lausanne uh, from, the, from the Young People's Movement. Another quote, and I hope you know who it's by, <coughs> serious but not hopeless. Um, it was, of course, said in Swedish. It was written in Svenska Dagbladet, and it was written in the beginning of 2008. Uh, it, it was written, Alvarlig Menente Hopeless. It was written by Bert Berlin, uh, after whom this, re this uh, research consortium is named. Uh, Bert Berlin did so many things for us. Um, he gave scientists a voice through the IPCC. A brilliant researcher. He plot in, a, in a paper published in 1959, he plotted this figure. This figure shows carbon dioxide in parts per million. Uh, how it would be, he, how he uh, forecast it would increase uh, by the year 2000. I'll add to that figure the measurement data from ice cores in Mauna Loa. A phenomenal prediction, a phenomenal forecast, a phenomenal scientist, and Bert told us to get out there and talk and communicate. So why are we here? What's our role as climate scientists in the enormous challenge that we have in front of us? Of course, we should do the obvious. Of course, we should look at every CO2 molecule we release and ask, is it necessary? And if it's not necessary, we do not release it. Of course, we do that. But we have an extra thing that we can contribute to the fight against carbon dioxide, the fight against global warming. We can create, we are here to create and to communicate the fundamental knowledge that must guide the decisions which will define our children's future. That is why we're here. Every single paper that you write is a part of that. Never underestimate your scientific contribution and the value of that. There would be no IPCC report without the hard work of you as scientists. We're now switching to a, a time where we really have to think a lot about communicate. Uh, you've heard a lot of communication initiatives today, and we all need help and support to do this. Um, over the past year, I've given a lot of public lectures about climate. And I've learned something. I've learned that what's actually needed to be taught is the stuff that we all know, every single one of us as climate scientists, the absolute basics. Every one of us can, can lecture for the public on climate. Every one of us can communicate. None of us needs to be afraid of doing that. And by spreading knowledge, we are defining our children's future and making it a good one. This is a view of Brunsviken. It was taken. Um, just before I went and applied to be 
one of the directors of the Boleyn Centre for Climate Research. That puts, it in, that puts it back in the winter of 2012. It looks beautiful. I don't, I'm not sure that my grandchildren will see this. I'm not sure they will see Brunswick and Frozen. We have a choice. Arian said it very well. I'm going to express it in a slightly different way. We enter a new decade and I ask us to make a New Year's resolution. This decade is the 20s. At the end of the 20s is 2030. That is what the SDGs are referring to. At the end of, tw at the end of this coming decade, we have to have halved our carbon emissions. I ask us to make a resolution to make the 20s the decade we bent the curves of climate change. So, those are my concluding remarks. I will now move to the practical details of the evening.